You're in the VIP section of Black Women in Radio, the podcast, a decade of the new woman. I'm your host, Felicia Love, along with our special guest, Lee Hamilton. At six o'clock, that's when he brushes his teeth, and that's when Gigi has to brush her teeth too. So we're, you know, we FaceTime and we brush our teeth together. Oh, that is too cute. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I'm a little bit behind everybody that I know. I had children so late. So yeah. mine are millennials. So I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be patient, but I am, I am looking forward to being a grandma. Uh, well, you know, John, I, I mean, my son and his wife, they tried getting pregnant for years, for a while. They were married for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were trying to get pregnant and, you know, nothing was working and they went through the treatments. And then um, all of a sudden they just got pregnant. They didn't need, they didn't need to do the artificial insemination. They didn't do any of that. They, they called, they came to the house and they showed me this little, this little um, Polaroid of this mm-hmm. little thing. And they said, you know, I want to show you, um, their dog's new puppy. They said, I want to show you the, the dog's new sibling or whatever. And I oh. said, okay, give me this picture. And I thought it was a picture of a puppy. I said, okay, just give me the picture of the puppy. Okay. Yes. And there he was in her, his mommy's stomach. Oh, so. how adorable. You know, I've heard so many stories about couples trying to get married and um, not get married, but have children. (laughs) And once they relax and accept, somehow the child comes and it's amazing. So when you're, you know, there's a little resistance in, gotta have it now, gotta have it now. When you start to relax in um, accepting what is, the child comes. I've heard so many stories like that. Yeah, you know, they did. And they, they went through so many artificial inseminations. And they also uh, joined this. There was, um, they also got a grant from an from a organization. I wish I re- can remember the name of the organization. It's a black organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and they give a grant. It's, you know, to black couples who need money for all the, all the artificial insemination. Wow. Well, so, we- um, they, you know, they got the money and, you know, they, cause they, they, they were getting ready to do, you know, to do the, do it again, but they got pregnant naturally. How and so they gave the money back and, you know, and that's, so it's, you know, it's, it just makes me tear up every time I think about that. But, it's, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And if you think, if you happen to think of the name of that organization, please let me know so I can share it because there may be some people out there who are interested in um, becoming pregnant. Since we're on the subject, let's talk about um, motherhood during the time of career. So what was that like for you? Actually, um, it was my career was the best thing to have a child, yeah. you know, because I only worked four hours a day. Um, and I actually started way before I had my son because, you know, I was on the air at my college uh, station, Emerson College in Boston. And then WILD heard me and called me over there and blah, blah, blah. But it was, it was really the best thing because I was. Um, I was home to put him on the bus. Yes. I was, I didn't start work. I had afternoon drive, so I didn't start work. I was able to go to all the parent teacher conferences. Mm-hmm. I was able to ride the big yellow school bus <laughs> on, on the trips. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it was absolutely perfect. I, I, I really thought it was like, God, you really planned this out really well for me. Yes. You know, yes. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I, I had enough. I had a lot of time. We had, John and I, we used, Sundays were our sitting back, listening to music and reading days. I love it. So we would sit back and I'd say, okay, so this is Miles Davis. And this is Beethoven. And this is, you know, this is Junior Walker and the All-Stars. You know, this is all of this. I so um, so it was it was not it was it was really nice. And John would come up to the studio sometimes and he would be my, you know, he would be my help. But oh. I've dragged him around from pillar to post. And we do. We yeah. do. <laughs> 
I, <laughs> we do. I drag him around, but you know, it's. I, I felt blessed. I I was I was able to have, you know, my son. Mm-hmm. You know, and and have a job that I liked. I talked to a lot of women who um, we reminisce about being in the studio with our children and depending on the day part, sleeping bags and snacks, um, teaching them when the on-air sign goes on or if you see this red flashing light, don't even breathe until mommy is done talking. (laughs) But those are really precious times. Um, I, I thought, the same. I I really thought that my career would be marriage, then have children, and they would all fit into my career because it's only requiring the four hours. And I got a snippet of it, but then, you know, we all have different paths. Life turned around and did a couple of backflips, but that was okay. We, We had a really, really wonderful experience. My girls are in their 20s and they totally remember um, being in the studio with mommy. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I, and, I, and, and radio was so, they, they didn't mind having children there. You know, I worked with some really good program directors um, and general managers. And um, John would take the records off, you know, because, you know, I, look, I've been doing this for a very long time. Right, right. I hear you saying <laughs> records. I'm sure people are listening or like, Records. <laughs> yes, yes, they were wonderful. Records. And you have to cue them up, you, you know. Have to cue the records um, up. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, John would, John would, you know, come there. One time, he took the needle off the record while it was playing. Oh my. <laughs> And it was, it's a learning curve. (laughs) It is, it is, it is. Tell me about your career though. How did you get started in radio? Oh my goodness. Um, Radio picked me. Um, I was, I was on my school's radio station, Emerson College's radio station. Had a little show once a week for two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, And I could play everything that I had. So, you know, I'll play that on my albums. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and in Boston, there had a couple of clubs. So if I went to the clubs and saw a musician, uh, musician or artist, I would say, you know, do you mind coming up to my college radio station? Um, and I, I interviewed Donnie Hathaway. Oh, how cool. And it was like, wow. <laughs> and then you get a sense from Donnie. It's like um, when I told friends of mine that he was coming, and he even said, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm not very good around a lot of people. Mm. And I said, okay. So I told my girls, I said, you got to hold off. You yeah. got, you, do, you can't gush over him, yes. you know? And I remember when I put him in the cab and he was going home, he said, thank you for making this a very nice evening. And I was like, wow, Donnie Hathaway. Wow. Isn't that, that is so cool. Yeah, so that's, 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 um, so I worked at the college radio station and Emerson College had like a 60 mile radius on their FM channel. Mm -hmm. Um, And then one day I got a phone call from WILD. They need an afternoon jock. And WILD was the black radio station and it was AM and it was at that time. Um, And when you when I did afternoon drive, since it was a daytime radio station, that meant when the summer came along, I probably wouldn't have a job. Right. Um, so uh, that lasted, and then I went to this. Somebody s- suggested that I just take my tape and resume and have this program director on this rock station. Just you know, just look. Uh, so I went there and I said, well. You know, look, tell me what I need in order to move and, you know, help me out. What do I need on an air check? Um, And they hired me. And it was like, whoa, okay. So, and from there, it's, it's been like that, you know? I mean, I've had, I've had spells where I didn't have a job. Um, But I just keep thinking, you know, I was so blessed. I was, I was blessed and I was fortunate and I had adventures. I didn't stay in one market. I've worked in four, four markets. And 
it was like an adventure to me. I got to, when I moved to Chicago, it was like, oh, Chicago. <laughs> and I did afternoon drive at V103. And I was like, Chicago, I've never been there. Okay, yay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've worked in Boston. I've worked in New York. I've worked in Philadelphia and now DC. I love it. So I've, had, I've just had an adventure. That's really what radio was like to me. I understood it to be an adventure. Um, I remember graduating from college and being told, okay, the, you know, don't, don't accumulate a whole lot of stuff because when you move to the next city, you don't want to have all of this, you know, furniture and all of this stuff to, to carry to the next city. And I really lived like a little vagabond, I think, the first half of my career, because right. it was all about the new city and the meeting new people and right. learning the culture of the city. You know, I, I love that part. So you are absolutely right. Totally. Or like right. kindred spirits there, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's, 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 for me, it was an adventure. You know, I see, and this was before social media, so I didn't have Twitter. That's I right. didn't have Facebook. Um, I didn't have anything other than my kid and myself mm -hmm. and a desire to travel. And learning the city with the map. I used to just fill up, <laughs> fill up the gas tank and just take my map and just go, just blindly go. <laughs> That's it. I would call the Pee Wee's Big Adventures. Come on, let's go on a Pee Wee Big Adventure. Let's see what, let's see what, um, go, you know, going downstate in Illinois is all about. You yes, know? exactly. Um, yeah, it really is. It really is. I love that. Now tell me about Sirius XM. Now you landed that. You've been on watercolors for how long now? Well, actually, I was on XM. Okay. I was on Soul Street. Okay. Um, when it was before they merged mm -hmm. and I was working with Bobby Bennett and Dr. Nick and, and Bobby Bennett is just like the quintessential jock gentleman, you know, unfortunately he passed, but you know, he was, he was just very encouraging. So, um, and he let me have, you know, he let me have some little bit of freedom um, I used to have a show called The Penthouse. Um, in fact, this was a show that I did when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And then I worked at another radio station. And oh, the one in New York. I, I had The Penthouse. Um, and then it part of Soul Street, you know, I had the two hours at the end to be in The Penthouse. I love it. And... Um, and so that's how I got into satellite radio. And I really believe in that medium. I mean, I, I was so thrilled to work in that medium. It was different. It was Tell me. Yeah, I, wanted, I want to know that. How, how different is satellite radio versus terrestrial? Um, because you're nationwide. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, you're, you're nationwide. Um, and this, I think Sirius XM is radio and then some, mm -hmm. you know, this mm -hmm. is, it was Sirius at one point and XM at another, you know, and then they merged. Mm -hmm. Um, so when they merged, you know, I got laid off along with a lot of the XM, you know, a lot of the XM people, but you know, a lot of the XM people stayed and, and or they got recalled. And the thing about this is like, wow, Sirius XM, not only can you have it, since I'm on a tout it, um, you know, here it is. It is on my cell phone. Yes, uh, well, exactly. Up, on my cell phone, you know, mm -hmm. and it has all these channels and it has video like, oh my goodness, what, today is Monday? Um, what is today? Tuesday. <laughs> To think about it. Whole, oh my goodness. Uh, oh, um, I got to pull it up because they did have a uh, special show for Prince. Oh, and, cool. Yeah. And you have a video about it. There's a video for it. So it's like, wow, this is new technology. I mean, absolutely. At its best. Really at its super best. Mm -hmm. And so I love it. I mean, I really do love it. Um, I can be in, you know, 
we're in all markets and we haven't left either DC or New York or, or, or California because yeah. there are studios all over the place. Exactly, exactly. Now tell me though, the delivery is a bit different. So did it take, what was the learning curve like for you? Um, the delivery is different. Um, but you, but you, but that's what being on the radio is about. You know, I've worked at enough formats to know that my delivery has to, if I'm working at a black radio station, well, that's easy. We can go there. Right. Um, if I'm working at WPIX in New York City and it's a, a, a so-called white adult contemporary station mm -hmm. that plays majority of white music, mm -hmm. um, then I have to, you know, you flow, you have to go with the format. You, you have to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to, you ingest that, you ingest that format, you get used to the music. Um, and I mean, that's just part of it. That's just part of the job. Yeah, it really is. And, and I've talked to so many other professionals about how radio has groomed us to be right. other things, you know, because it's, it's like you said, it's a no brainer because you've worked so many formats. So right. to put you in, you know, satellite radio or in a television station, you really have that level of comfort. What skill sticks out most for you? About being on the radio? Yeah. About what, what, what the lessons that I have learned, how has it shaped me? Um, first of all, I'm surrounded by music, all kinds of music. I was, as I tell people, I worked black top 40, white top 40, urban, churban, all night rock jock and disco queen. I you love know, it. That was all. That That's was the all gamut. And I played nothing but love songs and I hung out in the penthouse. Mm -hmm. um, I liked being around, I liked being around people. Um, the one thing that really scared me is when people started to recognize me. I like the anonymity of radio. Wow, we are kindred spirits. I felt the right. same way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like I like knowing so when I associate with my son, they did not know me as Lee Hamilton. Yes. They knew me as Pamela Suber. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's, you know, that was my married name at the time. Um and I, because I didn't want, don't, don't, don't start gushing over me because I'm on the radio. You gush over my son. Yes. Yes. And if he's bad, don't be afraid to tell me, the woman on the radio, I'm his mother. I will kick his butt when I get home. Exactly. Okay? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so okay. Now I lost my train of thought. Well, well how did you adjust? Cause I love that. How did you adjust to knowing that now your popularity is some, not something that you can control. So how did you adjust to that? It was easy. It was radio. Mm -hmm. they didn't I mean, know. when people started to recognize you though. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 I remember I was at a restaurant with my parents and this woman followed me into the restroom oh, wow. and I was like, she says, are you? And I was like, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> sitting here <laughs> really <laughs> all oh, I want to do is go to the bathroom <laughs> in private please <laughs> yes please 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 so and I just said wow. an immediate no mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. um and I, I just I, I I don't know how to handle it I really don't know how to handle it yes good at that Yes, 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 yes. I do. I, I love the anonymity of being in radio and not being recognized. I love that. But when, when the popularity of the radio stations shifted and people became more interested in the personalities, I had a really tough time adjusting. I had a couple of opportunities to do television. I fought it tooth and nail. I would not do it until, yeah. you know, much later in, in my career. So I, I follow you with that one, but I've never had anybody follow me to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, you probably do know, because after a while, like you said, when you're out there in the public, yeah. you know, and especially if you're working one market, um, and and 
you know, I, I was, I did a lot of things. I did a lot of things in Chicago. I did a lot of things in Philadelphia. I did, you know, I did a lot of things. So I was recognized, um, but I had my makeup on and I was all that. I didn't show up with no makeup and a baseball cap, you know, on, you know, to hide my, you know, my hair. Yes. Um, it's, it was funny when my son was in high school, um, one, I would go to all his games. That's another reason why mm -hmm. I love the flexibility of radio. I may get off the air and show up at games a little later, you know, mm -hmm. but I'll be there. I'm, I'm the loud parent. Yes, yes. Um, and then this, this went on for a few, this went on for a, a, a couple of, I would say about a year, year and a half. And then when I was going to my son's baseball game, one of the parents said, we know who you are. And I said, well, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? And, and they said, you're Lee Hamilton. And I said, nope, I'm Pam Suber. To you, I'm Pam Suber. Yes. Don't bring Lee here. Lee yes. is not in this mix right here. My mm -hmm. son is the important one. I love that. I love that establishing values so that there's no crossover because it's easy to get a little confused and feeling, you know, who are you more committed to? You know, the, the, the brand or the family. And you really do, especially women, we really do have to set those clear boundaries so that right. we're not confused and as to what we're doing and how we want to show up in our family's lives. So I, I love that. I love that. So with all of the formats that you've worked, yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Which was your favorite? I know. I know. Because when you're a music lover, it's like, don't ask me that question. I know. <laughs> I didn't say favorite artist, though. So I did kind of no. give you a little leeway. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I didn't, you know, it's, it's being on radio gave me an introduction to a, like being the all night rock jock. I didn't know who yes was. I, I, I didn't know. I mm -hmm. knew about the Rolling Stones, but I didn't know. Yes. Um, but it gave me a deeper appreciation for that. Um, mm. It's really hard to say. You know, I really think you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, you just adapt to the format. That's truly what happens. Um, I remember working for a country radio station, knew nothing about country, but uh -huh. I left that experience loving country music, right. uh, some, some of it. Um, so, you know, I totally get it. If you, You're if a better you, woman than I am, no woman. <laughs> It wasn't bluegrass country. It was more more pop country, you know. So that that little crossover. So that that I actually really enjoyed. But I never thought in a million years I would be in that format, much less enjoying the music. But it happens. I mean, do you, don't you find that over a period of time, and you work different formats and everything, there's two types of music. There's good music and there's bad music. Isn't that the truth? Absolutely. And no matter what you do, like I, when you put, when I put together my playlists, it's like I'll throw in traffic just as much as I'll throw in prints, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, and it's, and it, I think that's the beauty of music and that's the beauty of being exposed to the music. Yes. Yes. Even classical. I mean, I love classical music. So do I. I've yeah. never played uh, that format, but absolutely have it on my playlist. Yeah. So, so do yeah, I. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you... and and uh, big band Frank Sinatra. I love. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. High five. Bam. Hey, yes. <laughs> I sure do. I have the Rat Pack on and yes. and Ella Fitzgerald and yes. Yes. I love that. And, and then you see the progression of music too. You know, what was popular then? Because at time, at one point, jazz ruled. Yes. Jazz ruled. And I thought, yeah, jazz, jazz just ruled. Mm -hmm. But it was popular music back then. People right. would go to, you know, go to the dance hall in Harlem and, 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 and dance to, you know, um, Duke Ellington with Ella. 
-hmm. You know, they would go to the Savoy, they would dance. My mother would tell me about, you know, going down there and dancing with the dad. And, you know, and her skirt would go up, you know, she was like, hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but it's, it's um, yeah, and, and now what was popular then, mm -hmm. like your Duke Ellingtons, like, you know, your, you know, all of that. Um, Count they Basie were the and... Right. Yeah. And they were the popular artist at that time. Mm -hmm. And they were dance music at that time. Yeah. And now we're respecting the culture of that music and what it meant to us. And we put it in a category, a special category, a wonderful category that tells us about our heritage and it's called jazz. Yes, it absolutely does. Are you, do you think we're doing a good job at preserving our jazz music? I mean, you know, it's not going to have the same kind of audience, but there are jazz stations out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you look, listen to PFW. Yes. You know, um, um, they play jazz and they love it and their mm -hmm. passion is there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that is, that's where it is. That's where it's live. It's never going to die. Absolutely. It evolves because I, I think that other formats adopt, you know, um, some music from what they've heard in the past. It, it's just like fashion. You know, it never it's, dies. It, we just recycle it, <laughs> repurpose it. Or we, it. <laughs> or we change it up just a little bit. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, we mix our styles up. So it's... Um, I think that's the, just the beauty of music. Beauty, the music is um, a snapshot of a generation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and we move on and every group, you know, rock and roll had their own feel to it back in the day. Yeah. And now they have a different feel, mm -hmm. you know, this is this smooth jazz, this contemporary jazz is our jazz for our age. Mm -hmm. um and and that's what it is i mean music is just fluid it is it is i was watching quincy jones's um documentary did you see that oh was it fabulous i had to watch it over and over again because i i was too i won't say too young i would say too out of tune probably. And the fact that back then there was only television. So if you missed a television special, you weren't, you, yeah. there's no way to, to pick it up or talk about it. But I, I knew I loved Frank Sinatra and the, and the Rat Pack. I loved it. But to learn that Quincy was doing the music made so much sense to me. And I fell in love with it all over again. He spanned so many decades oh, and, my he's still, and he's always evolving. Always. I mean, that's, oh, yes. that's, that's the beauty. I mean, Quincy is just the, quincy, the quintessential mm -hmm. musician, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. author, um, writer, and he brings up these young musicians. I mean, he's- Does a great job at that. Yes, he's, he's supporting, you know, he's supporting that. Yes, yeah. and I remember there was a quote, oh my goodness, um, something like there are only 13 notes you know, there are only 13 notes that exist in music. And look at what people create with just those few keys. It's just, it's mind blowing. It is, I mean, it, it, it is, it's, it's, uh, it's just amazing. And, and the deeper you get into music, you know, as we grow up, our tastes expand. You know, when I grew up, it was like Motown and chess and, you know, it was all that, you know, mm -hmm. listening to the Isley Brothers. Um, and then it just expands from there because somebody will say, well, you know, if you like this, why don't you listen to what was played back in the 40s? You'll find you'll find some flavor, some very familiar flavor. Yeah, right. right. Absolutely. And I think it's important that our children know this, too. Um, cause I, 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 cause John and I, Sundays were our sitting and listening to music days. I love that idea, by the way. I, I yeah. really wish I had done something similar to that with my kids. I love that idea because it sounds fun and it's creative and it's something, it, it, it's, it's not boring because you're playing different music 
all right. of the time and introducing different music. It's just a brilliant way to connect with kids. And that's the brilliant way. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that's a brilliant way. I don't know how brilliant it was, but it was like an introduction. Okay, you're going to grow up. Let me introduce you to this. Listen to this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you can give up the rap for a little bit, can't you? Mm-hmm. And when you listen to the rap, you may even hear the soundtrack behind them as being a jazz song. Yes. You know, I mean, there is music is all about connection. Mm-hmm. It's all about connection. And healing, and, too. Hmm? Healing as well. Isn't it? Yes. Healing. I'm popping in. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> because, yeah, because yeah, I, I remember being on air many times and, and getting a caller to call in to say, thanks so much. That song lifted my day. And I, my day is being lifted as well with my favorite music. So it's absolutely yeah. healing. And, and you really feel like you're connecting with your audience when, when they call you to let you know that, you know, I was having a difficult time or a difficult marriage, but your show did X, Y, Z. So it's not us playing the music. It's not us creating the music. We're just playing the song. So I, yes, I love right. that. I, I think that's, that's also, it's nice when, um, one thing I love about radio, it's theater of the mind. It totally is. And you can create an environment just by the words that you use. And somebody will actually believe they're there. With Absolutely. You. You're Absolutely. sitting in the car next to them when, you know, when they're driving by themselves on a long distance trip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when I had the opportunity to really create an environment I mean, people really thought there were a whole host of people in, I, 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 when I, okay, I, when I had the penthouse um, and it was XM, this, I, you know, I, I pretended, I, people would call me up and I would say, oh, there's a baby and her husband and they're in the kitchen and then, or somebody brought some chicken and oh, they're going to be out on the balcony. You know, you use theater of the mind. I love that. Um, there was this young woman who called me up and said, I want my mom to hang out in the penthouse with all your friends. It's her 50th birthday. Um, I, I need to buy the airline ticket. Oh my. To be there. And it broke my heart when I said, you know what? Your house is the penthouse. You make sure your mom has a great bottle of wine and make a special day for her because she's going to be in the penthouse just where she is. Exactly. Oh my goodness. So you did a very good job of theater of the mind. People are buying tickets for it. I love yeah, it. I mean, they wanted, yeah. I mean, I was shocked by that, but people, sure. because, well, people will get involved in it. The people that knew that it was just theater of the mind, mm-hmm. they would say, oh yeah. I mean, baby and baby and Bill, that was the couple. Mm-hmm. Baby and Bill were saying, oh, we're coming up and we're bringing the lobster. And I would say, great, you know, bring the lobster. Yeah. Somebody else would call up and say, yeah, we're going to bring some wine. All right, good. Come on. I love it. I love it. Now, did is that something that you created on your own? Because I, yeah. I never in my entire career remember any program director coming to me to say, create, you know, theater of the mind, any of those, any of those buzzwords, but it was something that just came with the package. Would you agree? Yes, I, I would. And there was one thing that, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the program director's name and which radio station. Um, and he said, you are talking to one person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's, he said, he said, you are talking to one person. You're not talking to the whole city or your listeners. You're connecting to one. Wow. And when you think of one person you can't help but have a, a one-on-one conversation because that's what radio is. It's intimate. It's mm-hmm. very intimate. Mm-hmm. And you do have a one-on-one um, feel to it. You know that when that trucker is in that truck, you're talking to him. Right. 
Exactly. When that mother is up at night, you know, just just trying to get the house together, you're talking to her. I love that. I I love that. You're you're absolutely you're absolutely right when it comes to the approach and how to speak to your audience. And I think that's where I was going when I asked the question about the difference between terrestrial radio and um, internet radio. You know, it's it's um, you're still talking to one person, and I I don't think you can miss no matter what you're doing, if you come from that mindset. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, yeah, that's the mindset that I've been in, you know, ever since that program director, because it was like, I would tell him, you know, because when I first started out, it's like, you know, I don't get this. You know, I mean, what, what, how is, he says, this is what you need to do. You're mm -hmm. talking to one person. And as soon as he said that, it was like. It clicked, yeah. But when I was the all night rock jock, it's like, okay, who am I talking to? I'm talking to that one person who probably took too many drugs that night and staying mm. up all night, you know, yes. or I'm talking to a woman who's cleaning her house, but it's one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, that's, and I think that's why I love radio so much. I just love it. I never wanted to be in TV, on TV. Mm -hmm. um, it was never my thing. I don't like being, I'm uncomfortable if somebody recognizes me. Yes. yes. And it's, 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 um, so radio just gave me that anonymity, you know, the chance to be with people, talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And it's the best of both worlds. They, they may recognize your voice, but they may not recognize what you look like. Uh, yes. So if I show up with the best baseball cap in my, on my head, Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned before, John, the parents of John's baseball team when he was in high school, mm -hmm. it took them a long time, you know, because I, I didn't that. go out and say, hey, my name is Lee Hamilton. Yes. No, my name is Pam Suber. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, oh, I love that. It is such a pleasure to talk to you because... The beauty of what we do is it, our, our paths are similar, but there's so much richness in each person's path. And so it just really, it warms my heart to have an opportunity to talk to uh, women in radio who, who get it, who, who get that um, radio is just a good fit. You it's know, I don't have to think too many of us were trained to be broadcasters. There are some, there are many, but um, I graduated from college, ended up on the radio. Who knew? And learned my skills from there. And it sounds like, you know, that's very you similar to You and I were on you. the same path. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the cool thing to have these conversations. To, oh man, that happened to you too? Let me ask you this. What is the most shocking thing? I need to thing? ask you questions. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ask you questions. No, seriously, because but go ahead. Yes. What, ask me my question, and then then I can reverse. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the most shocking thing on the radio. Most shocking thing that happened to you on air, and how did you recover? You know, I'm I'm 65. You got I'm, I'm I got a lot of years, girl. You're I got so a lot of years. Like, Age doesn't mean anything these days. I, I know, I know, you know. Just Although we're like, dang, I forgot on. that. <laughs> yeah, put a little glow makeup on, you know, said, stay, sit back a little bit so, you know, nobody <laughs> will get out the blinds. Um, I love it. <laughs> um, I love it. Oh, goodness. Who it was, I'm trying to remember, it was somebody was assassinated. Mm, that's a big one. Wow. See, this is it's, I, I, it'll it'll come to me as soon as the microphone is off. Um, but somebody was I, I, I'm trying to remember. Okay, which what radio station was I at? What city was I at? Blah 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 blah. Well, blah, that blah. actually that's not as important as your feeling at the time and how you were able to navigate the right. the event. Yeah, I I'm, I, I was human. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I mean, everybody. You have to be human. You they may not know what you look like, but they have to feel who you are. Oh, so much truth in that. Yeah, you, they, they really have to get a sense from you because you want a relationship with them. 
Right. You want a relationship with your audience mm -hmm. and you just want a relationship with one of them. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just one. So um, I remember, oh goodness, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Um, I remember the assassination. I, I ended up crying mm. on the air. And that's human. That's human. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and like going back to what I, that, you know, the initial thing, radio is a one-on-one -on -one medium and they can pick up if you're a fake and they can pick up if you're real. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, and there are some days when I go on the microphone, it's like pulling teeth. <laughs> Because you're still talking to one on one, and sometimes there's no chemistry there. You've got to create some. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Might I, be the music that's not on, or yeah. You no, know, it's like it's like pulling teeth. Um, but that's like anybody's day. Yes, it, human. It's human. Mm -hmm. It's being human. Okay, I'm so what got you and what got you into the business? Oh my goodness, what got me into the business? Uh, college. And um, I was interested in radio, not necessarily interested in working in radio, but I was a communications major. So I figured I better learn a little bit of something. So I applied for a secretary position, a receptionist position there. And I was on the job one day and the program director said, you're not supposed to be up here. You need to be in the studio. You need to learn. You, you need to be on the air. And I remember the very first day I flipped that switch and nothing came out of my mouth. <laughs> I was dead silent. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness it was college radio. But then, yes. you know, of course I warmed up to it and it, it has been a significant part of my life ever since. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there, there was that, there's that aha moment. That's right. You know, there's that aha. And especially when somebody writes you a letter yes. and says, you you know, I love listening to you. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, wow. It's like, I, somebody, I'm making a difference. Somebody likes me. Somebody really likes me. <laughs> you know? Making um, a difference. Yeah. But that's that one on one medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's are that you, one -on -one. Are you using social media at all? What, what are your thoughts with that? Because I know when we were first in radio, there was right. no social media, we didn't have to worry about it. But now it's such a significant part of the job. So how are you adjusting with that? You're on social media. It's kind of a dumb question. I am, actually, but, but I'm, I'm not compulsive with it. Yes. It's a job, uh, Lee. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's a job. <laughs> Nobody has time for social media. You have to hire people for that because it's ridiculously time consuming. It's time consuming. I mean, you would have to hire somebody here to do this because I, I, I don't know how to do this. And then if you're a private person. Yes. What to share, what not to share. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's, it's and, and if you're on the radio, you can't really express your political, your politics. You do have to draw back quite a bit. And even when you express on um, social media, you have to draw back a little bit, which how do you feel about that? As part of me, I want to express and not have to think about the brand, but you do have to think about the brand if you want the job. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I mean, I can't go on and, you know, give my opinions mm -hmm. about what's going on in politics. Yeah. Because you I, got I, advertising, you got your, your boss, you've got and, and the listeners. next job. The listeners. They and the listeners. Be, they may be the, you know, the opposite of me. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they may belong to a different political, you know, they may have different political affiliations. Right. Um, so that's when you have to go into that human thing. Mm -hmm. There's something that we all have. We all have parents. Yes. You know, um, children come along. Mm -hmm. People we love leave us. The, the, um, or there may be unexpected death. I mean, these are all the things that we have in common and it doesn't make any difference. 
you know, it's like, I don't care if you're black or white, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's all about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people, the people, I keep thinking about the little, the, the, the um, children that were put in, in prison when they were trying to make, go come from Mexico to the United oh, States. Oh, like, how heartbreaking you know, is that? It was, it was I cannot imagine. I cannot. Can you imagine their mothers? Mm, I cannot imagine being separated, families being separated. Right. Oh, right. Yes. Exactly. And I think that's where we have what we have to remember as humans. There's a mother out there that's missing her baby. There's a baby in jail and these things that are missing their parents. Yes. And being mm-hmm. raised by other kids and people who don't care about them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, you know, I'm getting off on things right here, but, no, um, but, but it's yeah, it's very it's, valid and being human, feeling and yeah, expressing your humanness. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and and yeah. there's a time and place for that too, which is one reason why this platform exists, so yeah. that we can have conversations that we've all had, either you know when we meet each other at conventions or or right. Right. things, thoughts that we've been thinking. And right. have not been able to express because our humanness, I believe, as Black women in radio, has not been really expressed. No. And so this is like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, yeah. And usually, I mean, when I, you know, when I started out, I don't know how old you are, but you know, I, I'm I, up there. <laughs> we're seasoned, I'm up there. girl. We're seasoned. Yeah, <laughs> seasoning. <laughs> A little bit of hot sauce too. All right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But when we grow up, I mean, we were only designated. We weren't, we didn't do afternoon drive. Mm-hmm. We didn't do morning drive. That's right. We were a sidekick if we did either one of those, mm-hmm. and we were usually either late night. Um. I mean, and I grew up in New York. I grew up listening to Lamar Renee and Yvonne Higginson, Higginson and, you know, with Frankie Crocker and WWRL and, w, you know, eventually WBLS, you know, yes. and the ABC good guys. Mm-hmm. But there weren't any women. There weren't any women. Except as sidekicks. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And did you I, get that memo? that really doesn't exist, but that memo that said, if you want a job in radio and you hear one or two women on air, that's not going to be the radio station to hire you. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. So they put us in middays. We got our midday shot, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. um, eventually. Right. Right. So, um, but I, I think, I think we've come an awfully long way because you see women as program directors. Yes. You know, and I think that's the beautiful thing about um, Sirius XM too, because you have um, both men and women in, in a power, in, in a position of making a difference. Yeah. You know, like I, wor- I work with uh, Trinity, um, and who is top notch. At what she does, um, and she—I mean, she's just top notch. Period. Um, and then um, Lily, who comes on in the afternoon, and um, you know, so I'm um, there's you see a lot of good. You see a lot of mixture of things. You yes. know, that we see we see the gamut of the radio channels that we have. Mm-hmm. Lots of variety now. A lot of variety. Again, it's all on your it's you know, all, all on, on your phone. App. And that's the cool thing too, because you can be in another city and still hear your favorite radio program as opposed to having to be right within an earshot of the transmitter <laughs> or the signal. <laughs> So I don't know whether that's a you know, it, there's a part of me that says, but I do love local radio too. Yeah. I think that comes from from partly to being able to create within the programming theater of the mind. Right. Um, and we just have to get better at it um, because radio is evolving. You, you right. know, it's, it's evolving whether we like it or not. Um, and a lot of our local stations have been ripped away from us because of large conglomerates. Um, but we, we have to get better at 
making sure each community feels heard, you know, and feels like they're a part of, of the programming. Yeah, and, and they, they broke down the channels. You know, you have Soul Street, um, no, not Soul Street, uh, Soul Town. Um, you have, um, oh, you have Muse. They have Yacht Rock Radio, which is like the, the top 40 stuff back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a wide variety that would, you know, Latin channels, um, jazz channels. So they have, there's a, there's a lot of variety in this, in, 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 uh, in this little app. I started um, beaming when you said Latin music. I love, oh, love Latin And music. they have a wonderful channel. <laughs> I mean, I, that's, listen to them. That, I mean, that's what excites me. Yeah. I mean, I left my cushy job to go work at Sirius XM. At XM at that time, at, it was XM. It was like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to wow. be there. You know, I can't do, I, 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 this is something new. Yes. Um, and it is. And I've seen it evolve once they made the merger. It is, it's, it's, it's quite something. You know, they, they have, they, artists come in and record in our studios so you can get up close, you know, if, if you're, if I'm there, you know, you can get up close and personal. Mm -hmm. um, you can see them perform um, and nobody else is in the room except for the engineer and, you know, a couple of people from Sirius XM. I love that. I um, love that. So, and we're able to do a lot more. So it's, um, it's, ch it's, it's changing the way people listen to music and get their information. Like they have different genres of music, you know, mm -hmm. like in the jazz head, you have real jazz and they stick to that, um, uh, they, st they stick to that format. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, well, I'm in contemporary jazz, Watercolors is contemporary jazz. Right. Um, we have Soul Town. Soul Town is the older soul music from the 60s. Then we have something from the 70s. Then we have classic rock. We have hard rock. Yes. You know, whatever um, whatever genre you like, we got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we have it. And it is the ultimate in programming, for sure. It is the ultimate in programming. Mm -hmm. It is the ultimate in programming. Um, and it's, and it's, it's different. It's new. It's, it's, the, it's the wave of the future. Um, it's the way people listen to it. It's, I like the fact that I can listen to my favorite channel from here to California. Yes, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And it doesn't deviate. So <laughs> it's like, much like, you know, the <laughs> local stations at a certain time of day, you know, it's going to switch your programming completely from what you were oh, loving. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a flip. It's but there was you. you know what radio to me whether it was terrestrial or satellite radio to me is i love it yeah i love all the changes that come with it i love mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so um and if something new is coming out i gotta be there because it's like wow Satellite radio. Have <laughs> <Yes>. you <laughs> heard coast to coast? <laughs> For sure, that's a broadcaster's dream to be able to be heard all over the place. So it's either syndication or satellite radio to get you there. Yeah. Well, now there are more mediums. Um, there are more yeah. and more, but but yeah. to get the programming um, excellence that um you know satellite radio provides it's going to be hard if you're on your own you know you can't recreate that um i wanted to ask you one more question and sure. that is what do you see for lee moving forward what do you see in your future is it radio is it writing a book is it what do you see in your future um I'm more in my present right now. I can appreciate um, that. As a yogi, I can appreciate being in the present. Yeah, I'm, I'm more in the present. And there are things, my, my whole focus has been family. Mm -hmm. um, I got a grandkid. You know, I have a little grandbaby. And, and I have a grandnephew. 
Um, I, my niece and my son and their spouses and my, my sister. Um, and it's like, that's where I'm the most comfortable. I, I'm at, at, at the age that I'm at now, I like having the friends that I've known for 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a blessing to be able to have friends for 60 years. That's pretty good, Lee. How'd you do that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was, you know, it was, and then the new, and the new friends, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I think that's where I am the t at this time in my life. Do I want to conquer the world? Once upon a time I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I like sitting down and, you know, talking to my niece, mm -hmm. um, and, and hopefully be able to encourage her. And which, you know, and she encourages me and in, in, in on the other end. Um, I had a, I had a young black male child that I had to raise, yeah. you know, and I see how he is and how he is a father and his, and, and how his marriage is, you know, it's like, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Who got what you talking about? Especially being adventurous moms, <laughs> we did have a little worry in the back, in the back of our heads. Like, hope we're getting this right. You know, you you following mom, and it seems to be yeah. going great. But in the long run, are we doing a good job? And and it sounds like you are doing an excellent job, and it all turned out just as beautifully as you'd hoped because there the family knit remains, and and that's the that's our foundation, right? That's our foundation. Yeah. That's our foundation. Oh uh, it goodness. is. It, it is. It's, it's all, for me, it's all about the family. And, and if my family needs me, well, that means, you know, everybody else got to take, you know, get on the, you know, get on the back burner there. Um, yes. But I mean, that's what drives me. I want to make sure my sister is fine. I want to make sure she's healthy. You know, I want to make sure, you know, my niece, she's, she's a lawyer in New York City. Beautiful. I'm proud of her. My son. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm so proud of my son. You know, it's, it's he, with his MBA and, and working for a company that he absolutely loves and being a devoted Huge husband person. and father. Mm. You know, it's like, um, I, 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 I like that. I, I like that. I like being a part of that. That doesn't necessarily mean that later on I'm going to go beyond that. You know, I'll, I'll do something different because I have. I mean, I have. But right now, my concentration is are my grandbabies, my grandnephew, and my grandbaby. And do you know what? If the quarantine didn't teach us anything else, it taught us family. It taught us family. It taught us what's really important and it's not the chase not for everybody and i think that we were more programmed to believe that we weren't successful unless we were chasing something but this quarantine really at least for me it has taught me while i am ambitious i am so appreciative of family just like you've articulated that is more important to me than anything else is making yeah. sure that everybody's okay i love that yeah, uh, yeah, I, and I think at this time, I mean, the quarantine is a blessing and a curse at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing because even though we're quarantined in our own house, we can connect through Zoom, yes, like you and I are doing, which is our social time, by the way. And I'm loving this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and this is how we connect, and and we can we can see our family on Facebook. Yes, we can have the correct distancing. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, it's just, and plus, this is also a time where we need to sit back and reflect as, as, as humans. Absolutely. How do we move forward? How do we move forward? So I let, I'm not going to talk politics because I can go off on politics right now. Well, um, this is the show where you can talk about it if you want to. I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, you know, we're I mean, here I, because you know, I, 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 I can, I can really, I can really go there. But we've been having such a nice conversation. Well, you know, I love the conversation, but I also love 
being able to articulate what's on our mind because we are the game changers. Each of us right. are responsible right. for what happens next, you know? Well, yeah, I, and I'm really scared. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I'm scared. I'm scared for the type of world that may happen mm -hmm. and, and, and that these are the people that my two-year-old grandson is going to be in and my four-year-old grandnephew. Th those are, that's the truth. Yeah. And, and it's like, what kind of planet are we leaving them? Yes. And why, and I feel like, what, what, what was that person? Why can't we all just get along? Yeah, Rodney, was it Rodney King? Rodney yes, King. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. 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 It's because all about greed, you know? It's, it's about greed. You know what? Greed and fear. Greed and, greed and fear, absolutely. Because it's, it's available in the media for you if if that's what you're feeding you know there's a there's an, uh, uh, an old uh, indian adage american indian adage that says something like you know you are what you feed are you feeding you know the white wolf or the black wolf you know the good right. and evil and so it's all out there it's all right. out there but if we become reflect enough to realize that we don't have to be a part of the machine I think that's where we'll find our freedom. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be. There's know, a right lot now, of they, programming out there. There's, there's a lot. Yeah. And that's the thing about social media right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lot of programming. I mean, and there is people, there are people that are actually making money doing all of this stuff. Absolutely. But it's, it's like, yeah, it's, there is a lot of counter programming. And, and this generation that's coming up that grew up in this is reaping all the benefits of it. Right, right. But it's left up to us to also help them along with how to manage all of that because we've seen both sides. And bring ac accurate history. Yes, and bring accurate history. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bring accurate history. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love this conversation, Lee, and I do hope that you will come on again and oh. join me another time. It has just been such a delight to meet you. We did honor you for Jazz Appreciation Month for eight. You did? You I know. Did. You know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was having such a bad day. I was having such a bad day, and I was like, oh, I was sitting right in my little, in my little, you know, this little love seat that I have in my kitchen. I was sitting right in my little love seat, and I said, oh, I'm, ne I'm never on, you are on Instagram, right? Yes. I said, oh, I'm never on Instagram. Let me see what's going on in Instagram. The first thing that popped up was my face. And I was like, oh, what is oh this? I mean, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what is this? You know? And so, uh, you know, you made my day, girl. You oh. made my day. You I really, so you, you really made my day. And I'm so glad to meet you and to see you. We're going to be you know? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the whole purpose of all of this is to yeah, bring yeah. us to closer in, yeah. you know, because we've yeah. got so much to learn from each other. And I am so glad that it's making a difference because I have to tell you when I'm, I'm on my phone as well and I'm creating things and, and it's weird because I don't create because I feel like I have to. I right. create because it's inside of me and, right. and, and, and I can't rest until it's done. Um, so that jazz appreciation thing, Angela Green told me about um, that it was jazz appreciation. And gee, wouldn't it be nice to do a few things for black women in radio who've not right. been recognized for doing jazz? And I was like, yes, why don't we? Yeah. I could not rest until I got them done. So while I'm, while I'm creating, I am kind of wondering, is this making a difference? Are you just going over to Top Felicia? So thank you so much for saying that it did make your day. You know, it really, it, it, it really, really, it did. It did. And it's, and it, and I got to, I got to see the other females, you know, the other black females. It was like, wow. Yes. And then, and I sit back and I'm, I'm in awe of the young women that are coming up now. You know, like That's Michelle cool. Wright. I mean, she has her hands in all kinds of pots. She is phenomenal. And, and, mm -hmm. Huh? 
She and is she, phenomenal. Yeah, she is phenomenal. And there's a lot of phenomenal women out there, but you know, but these, you know, but she, 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 she knows how to, she knows how to brand herself and she's down to earth and she's genuinely loves what she does. And so, and, and then I get to see other women who do the same thing and how from the time I started radio in the mid seventies and how it has blossomed into all of this. And it does reflect in each of us, doesn't it? Right. Wow. Right. It does. It's, it's, it does. You know, it's, to me, life is like a daisy chain. You know, you have your time and then your time is up and you get that point where, you know, you, another daisy dot, you know, starts getting you know, connected to you and, and it's like, and you pass the baton. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And, and I see these young women that are younger than I am and, and seeing what all of the jocks, you know, the Vi Higginsons, the, the, the uh, Lamar Renee, you know, um, and all of these women, the baton that they pass to me. And it's like, I see I'm, this is the baton that's being passed to this new generation. Yes. And it's just like amazing. It really is. We never, we never would have had this snapshot, I believe, if it were not for a platform like Black Women in Radio. You, you did that. Oh. You did that. Okay. <laughs> I applaud you. I really do applaud you. Thank I, you. You did that. What a brilliant concept. What a brilliant <laughs> idea. And Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I was shocked because it's like, what? But it was, but it was like, and then I saw all the wonderful women that you interviewed. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. Oh, Lee, thank you so much. No, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate I... this. Thank you for giving us this format. Oh, my goodness. And thank and you. Time. Thank you for sharing yourself with the platform because there's so there's no way we would be able to get the nuggets of wisdom that you have in one interview so like i said i would love it um if you will come back sometime soon all you got to do is invite me oh. <laughs> all you got to do is invite me I, and, and we're girls we're going you know at some point we'll meet we'll have some martinis <laughs> i am so looking forward to that oh, oh my yeah, as, goodness as long as this, this corona we can do it I, I, we can just do one of those uh zoom things but um well you know what we might have to in the meantime but i am looking forward to the live version as well yeah, yeah. i i, I Somewhere really down the road see this you know there's I always believe there's good and bad in everything. Yes. The coronavirus is a frightful thing and it's killed so many people, mm -hmm. but it's brought so many people back together. It's a beautiful way to look at it. That is very true. Yeah. Very, very true. Yeah. Very true. There's one more thing I would love you to participate in. It's word of association. It's a little game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me put my glasses on. Let me at least look smart. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So, R and B or jazz? R and B or jazz? Boy, I can't make a decision between that. I know it's not a fair question at all. No, you know, because, because I don't listen. To, it's it's music is universal mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up, I mean, I grew up listening to jazz. I grew up, I mean, R&B was my, was my mainstay. Funkadelics. Now I have to admit, Funkadelics. <laughs> funkadelics. <laughs> okay, I love it. Me, if you want me to, if you want me to say, okay, which was my favorite group of all time? Parliament Funkadelics. Oh, <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Here's here's another one. Foot massage or no massage? A foot massage or a no massage? Foot massage. What did I say? <laughs> I didn't even read my own writing. <laughs> Give me your glasses, Lee. <laughs> here, here, one, here. Try these. Borrow those. <laughs> 
massage or no massage? Oh my goodness. Oh, a massage. Okay. Um, luxury. And a foot massage is even better. Oh, I do love foot massages yeah, too. Yeah. That is so funny. Um, sports or luxury? Can I have both? <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> I mean, I would like, I would like a little two seater Mercedes that, with the top that goes down, yes. you know, mm -hmm. but I also like, that's, that's nice. I also like, um, right now I have an infinity, a four door and that's to me is like a really great road car. Yes. Family, family, yeah. family. I can put the, I can put the grandbabies in there, mm -hmm. you know, I can carry a lot of stuff in my car. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, but yeah, my, my, I would like a little, I would like a little Mercedes. Okay. I would like a little Mercedes, you know, <laughs> a little Beamer, I would like a BMW, you know, whatever. Those are my two favorite cars, Lee. Stop it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> high five. Bam. I know, I know. It's more high fives in this conversation than I've had in, in weeks. How okay. about beach or mountain? Beach. Religious or spiritual? Spiritual. Steak or sushi? <sighs> Steak or sushi? Mm, boy, they're like, I would go with sushi. Okay. Although I like a good steak, but I, I, I like sushi. Okay, wine or shots? Or, or water? <laughs> no, I like, I like my wine. I like my wine, but I like my martinis too. Ooh, I love a good apple martini. Yes, girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, give me my apple martini. Oh, oh I mean, I even, I even had a martini straight up once with the olives and everything. It was like, oh, this isn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. Okay, two more. Heels or flip-flops? Oh, I got to have my heels. <laughs> And gym or TV? You said gym or the TV? The gym or, or TV? Recently, it's been television. Um, but usually it's a gym. I used to have a gym set up in my, in my house. You know, I, I, I have it and I want to reclaim it. But when, when my son and his wife were pregnant, I said, okay, I'm going to move all that workout stuff and put it in the basement and I'll have a crib. So when the baby comes, yes. he has a place to stay. <laughs> and now the baby's sleeping in a bed and it's like, get, get it out. I want, right. my, I want my, I want my room back. <laughs> I want, I want my room back. I, w I want to be able to have my headsets on and doing whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, that's my dream I going to. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, that's, I do love, I do love physical activity. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we do a lot of that in the studio. Do you do a lot of dancing in the studio? Not in this juncture. Okay. I mean, okay. it's, it's now when I was on the air. Look, until, until the Funkadelics come on, then we see a whole nother side of you. <laughs> oh, honey, I used to have, I used to have the radio when I worked terrestrial radio. Mm -hmm. The music was so loud in the studio. I felt I mean, like a bad mom. I was like, my, my kids. Yes, yes. <laughs> but thank goodness they loved it. <laughs> and they're fine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> my son did ask loud. me, mom, are you ever going to grow up? And I was like, Who wants why? to do that? <laughs> why, why, why do I want to do that? I'm in radio. We don't grow up in radio. <laughs> Amen to that. Who wants to do? My kids ask me the same thing. I'm like, nope. This is what you get. I'm sorry. You just better hope I don't regress. <laughs> I think that's so funny. Yeah, that's true. I'm telling you. We. I know. We are just total kindred spirits. I love yes. it. Yes, we are. Yeah. Wow. Well, it is such a pleasure and an honor to meet you and be able to talk to you and get to know you. And thanks for sharing yourself with our platform too, Lee. Oh, you know what? Thank you so much. I feel honored that I was even chosen. It's like, really? This is really, I, I really, I, I feel, I feel honored that, that you chose me. And, and cause I was worried, I'll be honest with you. I was worried about this interview. It's like, well, I, 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 I don't know. What did I do that was so special? <laughs> yes. 
and and it's just being us just just being us and and um being a part of the fabric of black radio heritage i mean we all played a part in that so of course of course yeah. you have something some uh, contributions my goodness you've given us a whole hour <laughs> Oh, of, of a little bit. I know these conversations go so fast. I love it. I love it because I know we both have done um, interviews where it's like pulling teeth. <laughs> Ooh, how long oh, yeah. is this going to last? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, and what's your favorite color? Mm. Right. Uh, and uh, 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 where did you grow up? Mm, yeah. It's like, oh. Oh, yeah. Prince is another one. Funkadelics and Prince. Oh, yes. That's another one. It's like Prince. Woo. Now you want to see me turn a whole nother personality. You play some Prince. I have, I have warned people, if you ever see me at a Prince concert and you walked away, I would understand. But that is Prince. <laughs> Prince. So I am going to apologize now. But I lose my mind. They're, yeah, I love concerts. I love concerts and princes. I remember seeing a Prince concert and and Carlos Santana stepped out on stage Ooh. with his guitar. It was like, holy moly. It was oh, like, Carlos well, Santana, yes. Carlos Santana and Prince. Can't yes. beat it. And you know what I loved about Prince is that not only was he popular music, he introduced real music. Yes. You know, he, he introduced did real artistry and i love that about him at a concert he would like you said carlos santana who would think but man is that a fantastic concert and 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 misty copeland having her dance you know i missed that one and i'm not happy about it <laughs> i know that had to have been fabulous I remember when I heard that I was, I think I was driving home and I heard that Prince died mm. and I was like, I, I mean, I was, I was sobbing. Me too. You know? That was tough. I, I mean, that was, I said, how, no, because I, 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 I need to see him about a thousand more times. Yes, that's exactly it. Right. Exactly yeah. it. I felt the same way. That was really tough. Him and Michael Jackson and Luther Vandross. Those three were really hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. Luther took, Luther took my breath away too. Yeah. My and God. Michael, yeah, Michael, Michael, uh, Michael took my breath away, but for some odd reason, I just wasn't surprised. That is true. Not surprised. Luther and Prince definitely surprised on those. Yeah, yeah, definitely surprised on those. Michael kind of gave us, you know, a vibe that things weren't quite right. So it wasn't, yeah, a complete yeah. shock, but it was still hard because those are the greats. Those are the greats. Well, thank you so much, Lee. Have a beautiful day. All the best to you and your family. And I can't thank you enough for all of the contributions that you've made in your lifetime to, to radio. So thank you. Yeah, you know, thank you. No, thank you. This this is this is a, just a surprise and a pleasure because you know, hey, I'm just a working mom, another working mom out here trying to make it. Yeah, yeah, but we're pretty darn dynamic, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> and one more high five. <laughs> okay, Lee. Thanks. thanks so much. Have a beautiful day. This. Um, you too. So we're going to stay in touch, okay? Yes, you have my phone number. I have yours. Please text me, call me anytime. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Be careful as you exit your VIP seats. They will be waiting for you next Wednesday when we talk to Melissa Summers. Make sure you subscribe to Black Women in Radio podcast on all social media and check out our website at www.blackwomeninradio.com. Ah, uh, ah, uh, here we go! Those are the things that are going on behind the scenes that listeners, you never want them to feel that, you know? You don't want them to feel that you're frustrated. You don't want them to feel that um, your feelings are hurt or that you're overwhelmed. Um, but you just want to make sure it's an ultimate ex experience from them from start to finish. Ready when that lane is ready for me, I will be here ready, still being Kiki. 
yeah, Joe Schmo is coming in in about five minutes, but I need you to do this interview. And that's just when you kind of like, okay, uh, you remember, you know, this is what you do. I don't want to be anything other than Keith. You know, I don't want to be the next girl. I don't want to be, you know, the, the other girl. I want to be Kiki. I, it was like if you wanted to play, you know, basketball, and I felt like I just ended up on the court with Jordan.